Good evening. Welcome to celebrate the Holy Eucharist that is the source and summit of our Christian life. Today, as we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Father will offer the Holy Mass for John Morello. There are a few announcements. This Monday, there will be Eucharistic adoration and decorating for Vacation Bible School. The Novena to the Blessed Mother Mary is Thursday in Alcott, followed by the book discussion group. We are accepting registrations for Vacation Bible School, which will start Monday, August 8th at 6.30 p.m. for children ages 5 through 12. The annual church picnic is Sunday, August 14th in Crawl Park. Bring a dish to pass and lawn chairs. And please note that there will be no 9.45 a.m. Mass on this day, as Mass will be in Crawl Park and begin at 1 p.m. at the Lions Pavilion. We will also celebrate Father Andrew's 10th anniversary to the priesthood during the church picnic, and all are welcome. As plans for the road to renewal materialize, it was necessary for mass schedules to be adjusted across the diocese in order to anticipate a future of fewer priests and to be sure that nobody is deprived of the Eucharist. The new mass schedule for St. Brendan is in the bulletin, and we will be posting the mass schedule for the parish family when it comes out. Further information on these and other important events are listed in the church bulletin. And now, please rise. Our opening hymn this morning, this afternoon is number 714, God Whose Purpose is to Kindle, number 714. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we gather as God's people to celebrate his sacred mysteries, we prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins, the times that we have not acted as God's people, or reflected the mysteries that we live by in our actions, and we ask for our God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came together the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Your great glory. 
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness. That for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Koaleth, vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to a man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days, sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And all the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. probably all familiar with the story of the Titanic. If you don't know about the Titanic itself, you know, from history, we may have all seen or be familiar at least with the James Cameron film that came out in the late 90s that actually did a pretty good job of replicating the ship and the experience. And as a matter of fact, so much effort was put into replicating the experience, you know, with good historical accuracy in that movie, that when even when you adjust for inflation, when you keep inflation in mind, it cost more money to make that film than to build the ship itself. That's how much effort went into, you know, that movie. But we could see, whether it's the movie or just reading history, Many wealthy people, not only wealthy, there were you know, three different classes aboard that ship, but there were a good number of wealthy people who you could tell by their attitudes and by the things they said and you know, how they treated each other, that they were very convinced of security from their money, that their wealth guaranteed them a carefree way of life and it bought them anything that they wanted. 
and making that maiden voyage on, at that time, you know, the grandest ship that there was. For many of them, they made that trip just to pat themselves on the back and commend themselves for their wealth that they have accumulated and the security, the peace of mind, you know, that their wealth now affords them. Little did they know that that ship that was thought to be so unsinkable would sail them right into a predicament where their money would be of no avail to them. Many of them lost their lives, all in a, a very sharp turn of events. Some of them learned the hard way that all that trust that they put in their money at that point wasn't going to do them any good. And it came as a shock for many of them because they were, many were very used to wanding their money around whenever they needed to get their way with something or get out of some kind of a jam. But this is one where money did them no good. If you remember from the James Cameron film, there was the character Cal, you know, who was the, the fiancé of Rose DeWitt Becater and they were sort of an, in a begrudged... Um, or a resented, arranged marriage. And uh, for lack of a better way to express it in church, he was sort of a jerk, <laughs> you know, to uh, very arrogant and really believed. We could see his arrogance came from his money. He really believed that by wanding his money around, he could get whatever he wanted, you know, his, the fiancé of his choice and many other things. But there's one scene where as the ship is going down, the... Uh, crew they're trying to keep order on the deck and they wanted you know they were said that certain people couldn't pass a certain line at one point and Cal pulled out a big wad of cash from his pocket and gave it to the the crew member thinking that would you know get him his way but the crew member just took the money threw it back threw it up and said your money is no good here and neither is mine. Sort of a striking moment in the film where the money that everybody based their security on or their sense of security on so much, now it's not going to do them any good. Maybe that experience really resonates with what the gospel is saying. How we could store up everything that we think we could ever possibly need, think that we have security by what we've accumulated in terms of possessions. But to the one who does that, God says, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded of you and none of those possessions are going to benefit you in my judgment. What matters most at the judgment time? <clears throat> See, there's a country song. I forgot the, you know, the writer who sings, it's not what you take when you leave this world behind. It's what you leave behind when you go. It's charity, helping others, that's really going to benefit us at the judgment time. So the one who really is concerned about storing treasure in heaven gives away what he has stored up, shares it generously, seeks out the needy. That's how we find treasure in heaven. So we know that a judgment time is coming. There will be a moment when we have to render to our God what we've done with our lives. Our possessions will not be, you know, of any help to us. We don't know when that is, but we are bid to always be ready for it. But we do know that it is always drawing closer. So think, we're invited today to think very seriously about our priorities, our treasures, the things that we clutch, the things that we hold on to. And let's ask ourselves seriously, if today were the day when we were to meet the Lord and every opportunity is spent, would we have a treasure that would really bid us security and eternal life?
let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Desiring the treasures that will truly last in eternal life, we now ask our God to help us as we seek the treasures that are most fit for his kingdom. Our response today is Christ our hope, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may recognize our dependence upon God for all things and let go of our attempts to control our own lives, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our hope, hear our prayer. For wisdom and inspiration for government and legislative leaders, that God will give them insight into the true issues and the needed steps for change to promote the welfare of everyone, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our help, hear our prayer. For a greater sense of the common good, that we may recognize that God's gifts are for the benefit of the whole human family and never allow them to become idols that control us, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our help. For health and healing, that God will curtail the new coronavirus variants, protect the elderly and very young from the virus, and heal those who are ill, especially Stephen Clock, Harry Hazlitt, Jason Berry, Don Martinek, Joseph Guido, and Jeffrey Antonick. We pray to the Lord. Christ our help. For all who have died, especially Diane Thompson, Gerald O'Connor, and our faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our soul, hear our prayer. For John Morello, for whom this Eucharist is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our soul, hear our prayer. And for all of us gathered here at St. Brennan on the Lake, and for families of all public and private schools, including DeSales Catholic School, that we may appreciate all the gifts that God has given us and become rich through words of faith, attitudes of hope, and deeds of love, we pray to the Lord. Christ our Lord, hear our prayer. Father, these are our needs and petitions we bring before you today. We ask that you grant according to your will, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn during the offertory is number 502, Come to the Water, number 502. Let them 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And in accepting the oblation of this sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not that you should have turned my earth, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those unable to attend Mass in person to receive the Eucharist, I invite you to pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our hymn during the communion will be number five, I'm sorry, 815, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, number 815. Oh Lord, then selfless man. 
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. We could now join in praying our prayer for renewal. In every age, O God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news, celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world that you have entrusted to our care. Send, Send your spirit, spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit, as we commit ourselves, ourselves to the renewal of your church. church. This, this we ask through, through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Next weekend for the two Saturday Masses, I leave you in the good hands of my esteemed successor in the vocations office, Father David Baker, who will be uh, relieving me so that I could celebrate uh, with my uncle, his 80th birthday. He's my uncle and godfather. So we pray a big uh, point in life. Grateful for uh, Father David to fill in. And, you know, his vocation director, he's always praying and encouraging prayers for vocations in our church, you know, priesthood, religious life. But we remember that even though that we don't, uh, we might not all be called to those particular vocations, we all have a part in building them up and encouraging those who are. So may we never grow weary of praying for vocations, and we know that regardless of trends, regardless of history, regardless of any kind of statistics, God could still provide abundantly if he chooses and if we ask. So may we never grow weary of asking ardently for God what we need in order to do his will. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks to God. Our closing hymn today, number 558, Lift Up Your Hearts, number 558.
is good.